One of the most difficult realities for nursing students is that a right answer may be incorrect because it's not the best answer. But don't let this be discouraging because prioritization questions can actually train your brain to be more attentive to detail. Prioritization questions are really wanting you to think about how stable or unstable your patient is. While tools like the ABCs and Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs can be helpful, what happens when, for example, all of the answers are related to airway and you need to determine which airway answer has the highest priority? Hi friends, I'm Anna and I'm a critical care registered nurse who has a lot of experience taking care of really sick kids. I also pass the NCLEX quickly with the minimum number of questions. In today's video, we are going to be applying the stability framework to NCLEX style questions. If you haven't seen my previous video on what the stability framework is, I would highly recommend that you start there and I will link that video for you in the description. Now that you have a working knowledge of what the stability framework is, let's jump in with some examples. Go ahead and pause the video and take a shot at answering this first question. Well, first we see that the stem of this question is asking us who to assess first. So we know that this is a priority type of question, and we also know that in order to determine the greatest priority, we need to figure out who is the least stable. That is the patient that needs our attention first. So let's look at all of our answer choices and determine which of our patients has the most urgent need. While A and B need to be assessed as soon as possible, they do not need to be assessed immediately. We have two answers left and we can now ask ourselves, is my patient experiencing what I would expect them to experience based on their disease or condition? We can expect that a child with pneumonia will need to be started on antibiotics. And while it's important not to delay this treatment, let's make sure there's not a more urgent need first. Because remember, all of your answers may be the right answer, but some will be incorrect because it's not the best answer. If we look at D, the last answer selection, and we ask ourselves again, is this patient experiencing what I would expect them to based on their disease or condition? The answer is clearly no. Because of this unexpected answer, we know that this patient has the most urgent need and we will need to assess him first. I like this question because it is a classic NCLEX scenario when all of the answers could seem correct and it's hard to apply tools like the ABCs and Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs because those tools don't narrow down your answer selection enough. This is a great example of how the stability framework can get you to the right answer. Let's look at another question. Go ahead and pause the video and try answering this one. This is another tricky scenario because all of the answers pertain to the patient's airway. How are you supposed to choose? Well, this question isn't as tricky as you think. While this is a prioritization question and that you are determining which step to take next, this question also demonstrates the golden rule of the NCLEX. And that is that you never intervene before you assess. Let's talk through each answer individually. Reassuring the patient that the ventilator will do the work of breathing for them might not necessarily be true. You need to assess first to make sure that the cause of the alarm isn't a ventilator malfunction. Increasing the patient's FiO2 may be an appropriate intervention because the patient is desaturating, but this should not be because you immediately intervene to suctioning the patient. And while inserting a bite block may also be an appropriate intervention, this would require you to act before you assess and that is a big no in the NCLEX world. Let's go back to answer B. This answer allows you to address the patient's imminent need for hypoxia while still assessing the nature of the alarm. Even if you don't know anything about ICU care, you can still navigate this question because you know to assess before you intervene. And you have to assess to know what to prioritize. Let's look at one more example together and try and answer this one on your own too. Patients with changing conditions and those who are unstable are typically not given to float nurses. We would want to assign float nurses patients that are very similar to populations that they usually work with and those that present in a predictable way, those who are stable. Our first patient is experiencing the unexpected. We know that it is an abnormal assessment finding to have numbness and discoloration in an extremity 
after it is casted. Next, the spinal fusion patient isn't that far into the post-operative period. And because this is an invasive, orthopedic specific case, we know that we would want to give this patient to a nurse who works on this floor, who will be familiar with the protocols and procedures that apply to these types of patients. If we skip down to our final answer selection, we can also quickly determine that this patient is experiencing the unexpected because a fever after a surgical procedure is an abnormal assessment finding. The best patient to assign to a float nurse would be C. A patient in this type of post-operative state would be very similar to other patients this nurse would care for on a medical surgical floor. I hope that answering some questions with this framework was helpful and that you are now more comfortable with applying the stability framework. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and please let me know if there is a specific type of NCLEX style content that you would like me to do a video on in the future.